Today, we are continuing our series, our White Shields Guide to Night Vision, and we're going to be looking at getting started with the Astrumitarum. Hello, and welcome back. I'm Knight Commander Cabe, and this is a tactical and strategic focus channel aiming to increase your skill on the tabletop. Anyways, today we're going to be looking at Astrumitarum and getting started within that in the game of Warhammer 40k in 9th edition. So, you might, might be thinking about, mm, I, I might, play, might start playing Astro Militarum. What, why, why should I? Well, it, the law basically is that the, the vast part of the Imperium's military machine. They've got a massive reputation for human wave tactics and just literally throwing bodies at the enemy until they submit. Um, they've called the Hammer of the Imperium for one. Why not? And the, the vast size is colossus with 500 trillion men, women, and billions upon billions of armoured fighting vehicles, tanks, and other vehicles such, as such. So, the, if you like the, uh, the look of tanks and feeding lots of tanks, this is definitely the army for you. Or even if you want to just go mass infantry, or even artillery, bit lots of super heavy tanks literally you name it there's something what fits every single caveat you are using the astro Militarum. there's a tank design for taking out mass infantry there's there's a design for a tank what helps taking out space marines a lot easier because literally the imperium made a lehman rush variant to kill literally anything you can imagine which makes it like a very versatile unit especially when you get it outright for what you want to use it for and then you've also got things like the uh, Bane Blades which is basically Titan Killers when you look at the Shadow Sword so just to, just to puts it into perspective that literally there's something to kill anything when you've got the guard so how do you start collecting Army of Aston Militarum or Imperial Guards that are also known basically I, I recommend you pick Pick what kind of regiment you have. It's basically the looks, and obviously there are some rules behind it. But I'd say more go towards what you think you like the look of best. The only downside with this is there's only three ones you can actually get your hands on very easily. The other ones are a bit. Some are made to order, and some are very limited in what you can buy. Still on Games Workshop. But I'll, I'll run them through. Obviously, the Cadian Shot Troop is there. You, you go to, literally, with the the whole range being basically Cadians now. Um, there's also some Catachans on Games Workshop still. Obviously, there's still not as much variety as, as they are for the Cadians. Obviously, you've got Death Corps of Krieg. They're your other one, but they're all from Forge World. And as you can imagine, Forge World is very expensive, so only really go for this option if you have the money to back it up or you have that little bit longer time when you are collecting these because they are quite quite expensive then you've also got armageddon steel legion these are i think the last time i checked there was one one infantry squad on there so you have got the possibility to take that and convert them from a from that one infantry box and say if you've got a cadian heavy weapon squad you can kit bash between the two but obviously that's going to add a bit more time and money towards it so it's probably not very beginner friendly um talon i think they're only on may to order every so often and that goes the same with mordians praetorians Valhallans, Vestroians. and the other one what's quite easy to get hold of are the tempestus scions obviously they're a bit more of an elite imperial guard force because there are uh, the stormtroopers, drop troops type of type of vibe. You got a slightly better stat, slightly and in more increased point cost. Or if you don't like any of them, you can take a base of any of those and, and create your own custom regiment. And backstory: there's rules in the the Greater Good book which allows you to do all this. So it's always something you can do just if you want to make it a little bit more flavour. But then. On the other side, you can always take a load of different um, models. What games workshop sell and kit bash your own, or even third third party stuff. It's entirely up to you. Games Workshop did a homebrew 
regiment uh, not too long ago with different kits they sell they probably go have a look at that if you, some more more inspiration in that then once you've got the basic of what you want them to look like you need to decide to yourself what type of infantry not infantry what kind of re regiment you want to replicate do you want to do mass infantry lots and lots of bodies or do you want to make a step a little back from that quite a lot of bodies still but some transports to go in with it like chimeras toroxes at a little bit more speed but still being on an infantry basis but then then you've also got armoured infantry you can go for same as before infantry and chimeras but slightly less of them and add some more tanks in or failing that go completely tanks just nothing else but tanks everything's possible or you can go for an artillery regiment or if you want a bit of each just just have a general mix personally that's how i play mine a, a nice mix obviously i'm a bit more geared towards armored infantry with a f little bit of artillery which i'm trying to get more into but obviously i still need to keep painting my models and this and to get to that there and i will recommend getting the codex straight off the bat before you buy any models personally because um, it lets you see one uh, color schemes um, to the different models you can get which is very helpful and it will give you a basic understanding of what they do before you go and make a, a print into buying your first box set so anyway picking up your first so uh, I'm only going to do it for the four main ones you can get because obviously with everything else being made to order or only available in limited boxes so I'm going to cover the Cadians, Tempesta Scions and the Catachans in this part because these are the, the, the easiest easiest three to get into whereas you're not buying lots of individual boxes and these are probably the most cost saving ways of starting the Astro Militarum um, so if uh, you start collecting sets you can see in the top right there's only two available um, the Cadians start collecting and the Militarum Tempestus um, obviously they both are very good sets obviously you get in the Astra Militarum one you get 10 guardsmen a commissar heavy weapon and a Lehman Rush battle tank this is not the demolished battle tank this is just the standard one so you the only options in this one are the battle cannon the auto cannon uh, a vanquisher and I think that's it I might be missing one I'm not too sure but all of the sponsors, the heavy bolters, I think it's just heavy bolters in this one. I've not made one of these sets in a while. And but the heavy weapon you have is basically a heavy weapons team. So you've got the options of an auto cannon, heavy bolter, last cannon, and a missile launcher. And you've also got a commissar in there as well. Very good. I think I, I think it's fifty five pounds at the minute, uh, pound sterling. So I'm not quite sure if oh, that's right and then the Militarum Tempestus one also very good value for money especially if you want to have a contingent of Scions in a previous force or a brand new force because obviously with Tempestus Scions you only get boxes of five so in this box really you've got um, four different boxes in one start collecting box but saying that if, say if that's not quite enough for you, you could, there's also the defense forces so these are the two big photos at the bottom it's obviously pretty much the same as to start collecting sets for the Aston Militarum but you get another squad of infantry a full squad of heavy weapons a chimera and a command squad and it's identical for the catachans so this is the only way I can see of getting a lot of catachan models quickly um, obviously because of, at the minute the very limited amounts of range for them but how things have been going on i can see them having a range refresh don't hold me to that but how the wind blows at the minute with all these new special edition ones the, just especially the catachan kernel what's been sh um, put on for sale for a limited edition has been knocking about as well as there was a sergeant as well for the catachan so i won't be too surprised if they get a range refresh um, during ninth edition so both both of these are perfect ways to add or even start your collection personally when i started i got um two squads i got the old um squads of infantry uh, when you had 20 men in a box 
I bought them off eBay just to get me started because I, I played Imperial Guard when I was I was younger, so I knew roughly how I wanted it anyway. So I got that and it gave me a good a good base. So I got all them done, and then I went out and bought myself a, a start collecting set, which um, was that good. I bought another two. So after that, I had a full squad of heavy weapons, three squads of infantry, and three tanks. I wasn't too fussed about the commissars one because I didn't quite like the look of the model, and two the probably wasn't towards my play style and especially with the rules it wasn't quite wasn't quite me and I also bought the not this defense force they had a separate one I think it was a um, one they did around Christmas it was very similar size but had different models which I also got one of them I think it had ball rings in it instead of the heavy weapons so I got that and I just went from there. So as you can see, with them only them three boxes, I ended up with 60 guardsmen, two heavy weapons teams, and five tanks. Pretty much. So it, it can rapidly expand, especially if you're going for the infantry. These boxes are a very good way of getting a lot of infantry fast. So but the, the, it's the same with all... all always really but it's, it's entirely how you want to go I wouldn't say definitely go for this unit but as we'll get on to later in the video so say you've picked up your first one or two start collecting sets for you or anything for the Imperial Guard you got to start looking like uh, what can I improve when you start playing games like, um, especially if you knew very very especially if you knew because um, guard are very very hard to master in a way but very rewarding when you do so obviously say you got um a, say let's say you bought two start collecting sets so you've got 20 infantry and two tanks and then you're playing small small games against your friends and you get your gaming club all around one of your houses so um and say you, the, your tanks keep getting locked up in combat and they keep getting destroyed by saying um, your enemies smash captain for example how can I stop this because this is really annoying me I keep losing my tanks well, probably if you can try screening it um, say if you get deep strike again you need to think of ways how to stop in deep strike this is all things you need to keep trying that with the models you've got like you can't no one's tactics are perfect for everyone like your play style might be slightly different compared to um, somebody else's so you might be a bit more defensive where someone you know is a lot more aggressive a lot more aggressive list benefits them but if you took the same list it wouldn't be so good for you because you're that slightly more defensive than they are so obviously take what you've got try being more aggressive try and be more defensive try and work out what's good for the models you've got and gives pros and cons for the then and it's like um, try and find out the weaknesses what what work good to you what doesn't work so good for you and then when you come to adding more units you need to remember to look for your um, your detachments and your core but core all but because there's, there's no point buying another two HQs when you can't really fit them in your total attachment what you've got at the minute because it's just going to be like, oh, I'm going to be losing command points in my next game, which is going to make you um, make your time harder winning as well. So you always need to take into consideration the detachments you're going to be taking, especially when you're collecting Imperial Guard, because the the points are that cheap, and you can fill all of these out very very quickly. In my current list, I am. Um, filling the brigade out without even trying I've been like that through all of 8th edition as well so just something to remember and take into consideration but then you've also got things like um, Lehman Russes they can be taken in squadrons so for each heavy support choice you can take three and I'm just, it's the same with Sentinels, the same with Hellhounds 
and pretty much every other vehicle other than tank commanders and bane blades and stuff like that so you'd be saying i've had a few games i've, I've roughly worked out my tactics and that and I, I i know what i'm doing so well, what what should you add next to your army well depends really depends on your play style and how you want to how you want to go through from there like if you decide at the start so obviously if you you are running that infantry base list you might want more infantry or it, but I'm gonna go from a balanced perspective from where I personally have my lists and that so say for an example you um, I've been playing objectives quite a lot and um, most of your infantry units have been destroyed and you might think oh I've not got enough you might want a few more infantry just to start taking their objectives especially in the mid to late game when they've all been destroyed you can have that little bit more staying power they're still not the best just normal guardsmen but you can also t think of things or a bit more hardware in like uh, Borgrins, especially with the slab shields or the um, brute shields. With the brute shields giving you the invul save, with their naturally high toughness anyway, and multiple wounds, they are very, very, very good at staying on objectives. They haven't got objectives secured, so you're going to have to make sure no of their troop choices are messing around with that objective. You might be suffering from um, less damage, not enough anti-tank, not enough anti-infantry damage, which I'd probably say take a bit few more tanks. But obviously, depending on which one, but obviously if you're struggling with um, hordes, I definitely recommend taking a Punisher, Lemon Rus, as obviously for the 20 shots, and if you go grand in advance at 40 shots. And then you could also probably look in it on that sad Lehman Russ, um, kitting out with heavy bolters on the sponsons and the hull, and giving it the tank case strategy. Um, and you can give it the, uh, I forget which one it is, but this one, what gives you minus one AP. So then that takes your Punisher to AP minus one, which if you think on 40 shots on AP minus one, a lot of the horde units are five up or six up so as you can see you're taking that save right down and if you take that on a tank commander as well you're hitting on threes and more than likely we're going to be wounding on threes with AP minus one it's going to be pretty devastating towards hordes with that amount of shots anyway um you might be thinking a lot of my opponents are hiding using terrain more to the advantage and I'm, I'm struggling to be able to reach out and hit them so you probably want to be looking at more units what ignore line of sight so obviously like your mortars your basilisks your wyverns your manticores more of your artillery um, side of it just so you can like take out them hard to hit not hard to hit hard, hard to reach units the ones where they're using cover to their advantage just something to like really like make them think I can't actually hide from you so I'm going to have to go for you which then puts you in the driving seat when you're fighting which is the main thing you might be getting charged a lot you might want some counter attacking units but definitely i recommend Borgrins here with a um, mauls because in combat there's not that much other than properly dedicated combat units what can really deal with them so definitely something to look for look at if, especially if you're getting charged a lot and you just want something just to meet them out in the midfield just to tie them up even if they don't last the whole game it at least gave you that little bit of a buffer to stop them getting right onto your line so you can deal with them the rest of your army um you might want some more officers just uh, the ones you've got you can't order enough of your infantry squads around obviously because orders are a massively a key part of the astra militarum some of the orders you can give your infantry squad to absolutely devastate it first rank fire second rank fire takes them ten um, nine last guns and last pistol from 10 shots to 
38 shots in rapid fire. I know they're only uh, ballistic skill 4 and strength 3, but the um, the way to fire if you do that a couple of times against anything, they're going to fail saves. It's just rules of average. So definitely something to look in for. And then also with the officers, um, bring it down for your heavy weapons. It's just a godsend. Then re then re rolls any re rolls in general is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Or you might want to take some super heavies. So your bane blades. Why would you take that? Oh, you, you, your friend might be that guy and be taking knights. Go out and buy a shadow sword. That knight ain't gonna last very long. Not with the damage output of a shadow sword can put out anyway. But my key advice is gradually add units and find out combos, what units you pick work well together. I'll be doing more of this in the future for different units themselves, but that's later on down the line. Um, play testing is vital because I wouldn't go out and buy um, four or five different boxes and, and put them all in one unit together because you might find the they play really badly together. Whereas if you buy one, then you can see where you're lacking in a certain area, then you can like, oh, I'm going to bolster that up a bit more, like we said before from this list. Um, personally, if I was starting now. I'd be using the new crusade system for a good way to learn the army and it will naturally grow through the rules as that so a few of my friends are starting different armies and they're going to be using the crusade system to to build up their their armies that way which personally I think is going to be the best way to go about doing it and also the list you make might be good against a certain certain faction so your list might be more better suited at killing hordes or might be better suit at killing um, tanks. Um, this never one list what well, beats everything. There's always going to be a weakness. There's always going to be a counter to your list, and that. So I wouldn't be too disheartened if you start losing games. But it's best to fight different armies as much as you can, because then you can see where these weaknesses are and try and compensate slightly for them. Yeah, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but you can make. A list balanced enough to make it not a guaranteed loss or a guaranteed win but more down to your strategic because any, any list can be any list if it's down to the actual player it's it's always that and don't be afraid to try new units like I was dead against um, psychers until I started using them about six seven months ago and I've come to the realization I should have been using them a long time ago but that were me because I didn't really want to do a psychic kind of army. Now I regret that decision. So I was still trying to learn some of the best ways to do with my psychics, which is something I will be moving more into during night. So anyway, I hope that helps everyone. And obviously I'll be doing a lot more videos on this in the future. And um, taking a unit by unit basis, pros and cons, and some of the good combinations you can use for them. Anyway, thank you all for watching, don't forget to drop a comment what you'd like to see next and um, I'd much appreciate if you drop me a like and, or subscribe. Anyway, that's it for me, I'll catch you all on the battlefield, goodbye.